On today's video, we're going to get a little bit more practice graphing piecewise functions, and then I'm going to show you how to use a graphing calculator to graph these piecewise functions. But let's do one by hand first, and then we'll do the same, same one with a graphing calculator. So if you don't have a graphing calculator with you right now, you probably should shut the video off and go and grab a graphing calculator. So the piecewise function that I'm going to do right now is f of x is equal to x plus 1, and that is when the x values are less than 0. f of x is equal to 1, and that is when 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 2. And then f of x is equal to the negative x plus 3, and that's when x is greater than 2. So we've got three pieces to this piecewise function. So we have the splitting points here at x equals 0 and x equals 2 when we set up this graph. I think I'll just graph it over here. And I'll just uh, sketch a small graph going up to 2 and back to negative 2, down to negative 2 and over to 2. Well, the splitting points are when x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 2. That's the t those are the two points where, where these, this graph is going to break into a different piece. So over here, when x is less than 0, that means all of the points that are to the left of the y-axis, the graph is going to be y equals x plus 1. Well, y equals x plus 1 has a y-intercept of 1, but it's not going to touch the y-axis because this says x is strictly less than 0, so we have an open circle here. And then we have a straight line, of course, because this is a linear function, and the x-intercept is negative 1, and the slope is 1, so up 1 over 1. So there's the first piece of that function. And the second piece says y is going to be equal to 1, in between 0 and 2. Well, when you start at x equals 0 right here, y is equal to 1. So actually, this connects right here. So we can fill in this circle for the second piece. And this is going all the way over to x equals 2. But this is strictly less than, so I'm going to have an open circle here for strictly less than. And y is going to be equal to 1. So it's just a constant function, actually, y equals 1. Now we have the third piece of the piecewise function, y equals negative x plus 3. But that's only when x is greater than 2, so everything to the right of this point is going to be this third, third part. Well, this actually has a point on this graph of 2, comma 1. Because when x is equal to 2, negative 2 plus 3 is equal to 1. So this point right here... Oh, you know what? Let's change this to greater than or equal to. So we can fill in this circle right here. This point is on this graph. Now, if I were to graph this whole thing this with the domain of all real numbers, it would just be a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 3, or a slope of negative 1 and a y-intercept of 3. But we're not going to the left of 2. So what we have is an x-intercept of 3 here, and the slope is negative 1. So there's the third piece. First piece is up here. Second piece in the middle is here between 0 and 2. And negative x plus 3 is over here when x is greater than or equal to, to 2. So this is called a continuous graph because there's no, there are no breaks in this. That's just a vocabulary word for you. Well, let's see how we can do this on the graphing calculator. So pull out your graphing calculator. Oops. Let me just reset at second plus 712. So now you've got a reset calculator. So now we're going to press y equals. Now if you need to stop this at any point because I'm going too fast, just don't hesitate to stop the video and take a look at what's going on or just rewind it and listen to me again. If you want to do a piecewise function, your pieces are going to go in parentheses. The first piece of our piecewise function is x plus 1. So we're going to put x plus 1 inside parentheses. And then the second part of this, when x is less than 0, that's going to go in parentheses right next to it. So we're going to type in x. And to get a less than symbol on a graphing calculator, you're going to do second math, which is called test. And the less than is op option 5. 
So x is less than 0 in its parentheses. And that would graph just the first piece of that piecewise function. So if you just want to take a look at that part of the graph, you can press the graph button there. It's going to stop because this graph does not go, up, go beyond x equals 0. So let's do the second piece of this function. Now, the second piece of function says y equals 1 when x is in between 0 and 2. Well, you can't put a compound inequality into the graphing calculator like this. So you might want to go slowly through this to see how it's done. y is going to be equal to 1, so there's your second piece in parentheses. And then in parentheses, you're going to put the first part, which is 0 is less than or equal to x, 0. Second math is less than or equal to x. So that's that first part. Now the second part of this compound inequality, you're going to hit second test. And now you're going to go over to the logic section. And option number one is and. So 0 is less than or equal to x. And now you're going to put the second part in here, which is x is less than 2. So in you don't need parentheses, you've already opened that up. So you've got x is second test less than 2, and then close up that parentheses. Sorry for that glare. Okay, so there's the second piece, and there is the domain in parentheses. So if you want to take a look at that graph, there's that second piece going straight across. And now let's put the third piece in under y3. And under y3 we have the um, function negative x plus 3 in parentheses. And then this domain is x is greater than or equal to 2. So x, second math, option 4, greater than or equal to 2 in parentheses. And now we've got the whole thing graphed out. And there you go, that is the piecewise function that, that looks like this. But now you know how to do it on the graphing calculator. In other words, each piece goes in a separate y equals. The function itself goes in parentheses. And then the domain goes in its own set of parentheses. And if you have a compound inequality, you have to put an and in between the two sections of this compound inequality. And then the, the next part of this, these notes, these notes are going to be kind of short today because I'm only going to cover one more thing. And this next thing doesn't have anything to do with um, piecewise functions, really. I'm going to talk about a new concept called a relative maximum. And a relative minimum. Relative minimum. Of a function. So a relative max and a relative minimum of a function is probably best described um, with a graph. So I'm just going to draw a random graph of any random function. I guess I'll come back here. So here's my x-axis and here's my y-axis. And let me just draw this as a curvy graph. I'll come up around go down, go up, and then go down again. So this, this function is called f, or f of x. A relative maximum is the highest point on this graph relative to all the points surrounding it. So here's your definition. Relative max. It is the highest point on the graph relative to the points surrounding it. So what does that mean? It means on this graph, once you go up the hill and you hit the highest point on this graph, right here on, the, I guess it's the y-intercept in this particular case, right here this would be a relative maximum because it's the highest point to those points immediately surrounding it. So let's point to that and we'll call this a relative max. And we've got another relative max right here because we're going up the hill and once you start coming down the hill again we've got another relative max. 
And the relative min is the same thing, except it's the lowest point on the graph. So I'll just say same as above, but it's the lowest point relative to those surrounding it. So that means when you go down the hill and you hit bottom, this is called the relative min. There aren't any other relative maxes or mins on this graph because this graph actually starts going down forever and it does not turn around and come back up. Or it, it might, but for what we're looking at, you can't see that. And then this graph over here goes, looks like it's going down forever and it doesn't come back up again. So we've defined all the relative maxes and mins. Now there's another um, set of vocabulary words called the absolute max and the absolute minimum. So the absolute maximum is the absolutely highest point on the graph, and the absolute minimum is the absolutely lowest point on the graph. So if we take a look at this graph, here is a relative max, but it's really not quite, it's almost as high, but it's not quite as high as this one. I think this one is a little bit higher. So this point over here, well this, this point is not called f of x, this whole graph is called f of x. So this point right here, not only is it the relative max, but it is also, and it is the absolute max because it's absolutely the highest point on the graph. Now this relative min, you might think that this is also the absolute min, but it's not because this graph goes lower than this point. It actually goes down and down and down and down forever in this direction and forever in this direction. And so a graph that goes down forever does not have an absolute max minimum. So there is no absolute minimum for this function. <coughs> if this graph happened to be turning around and coming back up again and going back up forever, there would be no ma absolute maximum either, but there is in this case. And you might remember um, in a graphing calculator how to find the relative maxes and mins, but if you've forgotten, I'll show you a way. Um, Let's just define a function. Um, let's call it y equals x to the fourth minus, um, let's do 2x squared um, plus 1. Let's see what kind of a, uh, of a curve we're going to get out of that. Okay, this is going to give us a w-shaped curve. If you want to zoom in on this a little bit, so we can see it better. You can just press zoom, option two, and hit enter. So we can really see. Now this graph goes up forever in both directions. So this graph has no absolute maximum. This has two relative minimums and two absolute minimums. Those two points are both absolute and relative minimums. This point right here is a relative maximum, but it is not the absolute maximum. And if you remember how to find those points, you're going to do second trace, which is calculate. The minimum, option three, that's actually the relative min. And when it says left bound, you're going to pull your cursor to the left and hit enter. And then you're going to pull your cursor over to the right and hit enter and hit enter again. And then the relative min, anytime you get a point nine, 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 that means one. So the relative minimum on this point is negative one comma zero. And if you want to calculate that relative maximum, second calculate. Option four is give me a relative maximum. So you can pull your cursor up to the left of the maximum and hit enter. 
to the right of the maximum and hit enter and then hit, hit enter again. And anytime you get a number that says E negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, E negative something or other, that's this calculator's crazy way of saying zero. So the relative maximum is actually zero comma one. And it's just the internal software in this calculator that's making it say this crazy number. I hope you've seen it before. But this is actually zero comma one for the relative maximum. And now to get this relative minimum, go through the same process. Second, trace, option three minimum. And now pull your cursor to the left of the minimum and hit enter. Pull your cursor over to the right of the minimum and hit enter and hit enter again. And now, oh, look at that. That is beautiful. This relative minimum is actually one comma zero. So for this particular function, like I said, no absolute maximums, but a couple of absolute minimums, relative minimums, and a relative maximum. And that's all I have for you today. See you tomorrow.